boomerang. A boomerang is a thrown tool, typically constructed as a flat airfoil, that is designed to spin about an axis perpendicular to the direction of its flight. A returning boomerang is designed to return to the thrower. It is well known as a weapon used by indigenous Australians for hunting. Boomerangs have been historically used for hunting, as well as sport, and entertainment. They are commonly thought of as an Australian icon, and come in various shapes and sizes. A boomerang is traditionally a long wooden device, although historically boomerang-like devices have also been made from bones. Modern boomerangs used for sport are often made from thin aircraft plywood, plastics such as ABS, polypropylene, phenolic paper, or even high-tech materials such as carbon fiber reinforced plastics. Boomerangs come in many shapes and sizes depending on their geographic or tribal origins and intended function. Many people think of a boomerang as the Australian type, although today there are many types of more easily usable boomerangs, such as the cross stick, the pinwheel, the tumble stick, the boomerbird, and many other less common types. An important distinction should be made between returning boomerangs and non returning boomerangs. Returning boomerangs fly and are examples of the earliest heavier than air human made flight. A returning boomerang has two or more airfoil wings arranged so that the spinning creates unbalanced aerodynamic forces that curve its path so that it travels in an elliptical path and returns to its point of origin when thrown correctly. While a throwing stick can also be shaped overall like a returning boomerang, it is designed to travel as straight as possible so that it can be aimed and thrown with great force to bring down the game. Its surfaces therefore are symmetrical and not uneven like the aerofoils which give the returning boomerang its characteristic curved flight. The most recognizable type of the boomerang is the L-shaped returning boomerang, while non-returning boomerangs, throwing sticks, or shawnees, were used as weapons. Returning boomerangs have been used primarily for leisure or recreation. Returning boomerangs were also used to decoy birds of prey, thrown above the long grass to frighten game birds into flight and into waiting nets. Modern returning boomerangs can be of various shapes or sizes. Historical evidence also points to the use of non-returning boomerangs by the Native Americans of California and Arizona, and inhabitants of Southern India for killing birds and rabbits. Indeed, some boomerangs were not thrown at all, but were used in hand-to-hand -hand combat by indigenous Australians. Ancient Egyptian examples, however, have been recovered, and experiments have shown that they functioned as returning boomerangs. Boomerangs can be variously used as hunting weapons, percussive musical instruments, battle clubs, fire starters, decoys for hunting waterfowl, and as recreational play toys. The smallest boomerang may be less than from tip to tip, and the largest over in length. Tribal boomerangs may be inscribed in or painted with designs meaningful to their makers. Most boomerangs seen today are the tourist or competition sort, and are almost invariably of the returning type. The origin of the term is mostly certain, but many researchers have different theories on how the word entered into the English vocabulary. One source asserts that the term entered the language in 1827, adapted from an extinct Aboriginal language of New South Wales, Australia, but mentions a variant, Woomerang, which it dates to 1798. The boomerang was first encountered by Western people at Farm Cove, Port Jackson, Australia, in December 1804 when a weapon was witnessed during a tribal skirmish. David Collins listed Womerang as one of eight aboriginal names of clubs in 1798. A 1790 anonymous manuscript on aboriginal language of New South Wales reported Boom Arid as the scimitar. In 1822, it was described in detail and recorded as a Boom Arang in the language of the Turuwal people, a subgroup of the Darug, of the Georges River near Port Jackson. The Tural used other words for their hunting sticks but used boomerang to refer to a returning throw stick. Depictions of boomerangs being thrown at animals, such as kangaroos, appear in some of the oldest rock art in the world, the indigenous Australian rock art off the Kimberley region, which is potentially up to 50,000 years old. Stencils and paintings of boomerangs also appear in the rock art of West Papua, including on Bird's Head Peninsula and Kaimana, likely dating to the last glacial maximum. When lower sea levels led to cultural continuity between Papua and Arnhem Land in northern Australia. The oldest surviving Australian Aboriginal boomerangs come from a cache found in a peat bog in the Wherry Swamp of South Australia and date to 10,000 BC. Although traditionally thought of as Australian, boomerangs have been found also in ancient Europe, Egypt, and North America. Hunting sticks discovered in Europe seem to have formed part of the Stone Age arsenal of weapons.
One boomerang that was discovered in a blizzard caving the Carpathian Mountains in Poland was made of mammoth tusk and is believed, based on AMS dating of objects found with it, to be about 30,000 years old. In the Netherlands, boomerangs have been found in Vla Erdingen and Velsen from the 1st century BC King Tutankhamun, the famous pharaoh of ancient Egypt, who died over 3,300 years ago, owned a collection of boomerangs of both the straight flying, hunting and returning variety. No one knows for sure how the returning boomerang was invented, but some modern boomerang makers speculate that it developed from the flattened throwing stick, still used by the Australian Aborigines and other indigenous peoples around the world, including the Navajo in North America. A hunting boomerang is delicately balanced and much harder to make than a returning one. The curving flight characteristic of returning boomerangs was probably first noticed by early hunters trying to tune their throwing sticks to fly straight. Today, Boomerangs are mostly used for recreation. There are different types of throwing contests, accuracy of return, Aussie round, trick catch, maximum time aloft, fast catch, and endurance, see below. The modern sport boomerang, often referred to as a boom or rang, is made of Finnish birch plywood, hardwood, plastic or composite materials and comes in many different shapes and colors. Most sport boomerangs typically weigh less than, with MTA boomerangs, boomerangs used for the maximum time aloft event, often under. Boomerangs have also been suggested as an alternative to clay pigeons in shotgun sports, where the flight of the boomerang better mimics the flight of a bird offering a more challenging target. The modern boomerang is often computer-aided designed with precision airfoils. The number of wings is often more than two as more lift is provided by three or four wings than by two. In 1992, German astronaut Alf Merbold performed an experiment aboard Spacelab that established that boomerangs function in zero gravity as they do on Earth. French astronaut Jean-Francois Clairvoy aboard Mir repeated this in 1997. In 2008, Japanese astronaut Takao Doi again repeated the experiment on board the International Space Station. Traditionally, most boomerangs used by Aboriginal groups in Australia were non-returning. These weapons, sometimes called throw sticks or kylies, were used for hunting a variety of prey, from kangaroos to parrots, at a range of about a 2 kg, 4.4 pounds, non-returning boomerang could inflict mortal injury to a large animal. A throw stick thrown nearly horizontally may fly in a nearly straight path and could fell a kangaroo on impact to the legs or knees, while the long-necked emu could be killed by a blow to the neck. Hook non-returning boomerangs, known as beak kylies, used in northern central Australia, have been claimed to kill multiple birds when thrown into a dense flock. It should be noted that throw sticks are used as multi-purpose tools by today's Aboriginal peoples, and besides throwing could be wielded as clubs, used for digging, used to start friction fires, and are sonorous when two are struck together. A returning boomerang is a rotating wing. Although it is not a requirement that the boomerang be in its traditional shape, it is usually flat. A falling boomerang starts spinning and most then fall in a spiral. When the boomerang is thrown with high spin, a boomerang flies in a curve rather than a straight line. When thrown correctly, a boomerang returns to its starting point. Returning boomerangs consist of two or more arms, or wings, connected at an angle. Each wing is shaped as an airfoil. As the wing rotates and the boomerang moves through the air, this creates airflow over the wings and this creates lift on both wings. However, during one half of each blade's rotation, it sees a higher airspeed, because the rotation tip speed and the forward speed add, and when it is in the other half of the rotation, the tip speed subtracts from the forward speed. Thus if thrown nearly upright each blade generates more lift at the top than the bottom. While it might be expected that this would cause the boomerang to tilt around the axis of travel, because the boomerang has significant angular momentum, gyroscopic effect causes the plane of rotation to tilt about an axis that is 90 degrees to the direction of flight and this is what curves the flight in such a way that it will tend to return. Thus gyroscopic precession is what makes the boomerang return to the thrower when thrown correctly. This is also what makes the boomerang fly straight up into the air when thrown incorrectly. With the exception of long-distance boomerangs, they should not be thrown sidearm or like a frisbee, but rather thrown with the long axis of the wings rotating in an almost vertical plane. Fast catch boomerangs usually have three or more symmetrical wings, seen from above, whereas a long distance boomerang is most often shaped similar to a question mark. Maximum time aloft boomerangs mostly have one wing considerably longer than the other. This feature, 
along with carefully executed bends and twists in the wings help to set up an auto-rotation effect to maximize the boomerang's hover time in descending from the highest point in its flight. Some boomerangs have turbulators, bumps or pits on the top surface that act to increase the lift as boundary layer transition activators, to keep attached turbulent flow instead of laminar separation. The pattern is placed on the plywood so that the wood grain runs across from the tip of one end of the boomerang to the tip of the other end. Try to get the grain of the outer ply running at 45 degrees to the length of the arms. If there is any warp in the wood, make sure that this produces dihedral on the upper side of the boomerang, i.e., if the airfoil is uppermost and the boomerang is on a flat surface, then the wing tips are raised slightly above the surface. Any anhedral on the boomerang won't fly, the pattern is traced onto the boomerang with a pencil. The boomerang shape is cut out of the plywood. This basic cutout is called the blank. An outline is drawn on the top of the blank to show the areas to be shaped for the leading and trailing edges of the wings. The profiles of the wings are shaped. The top of the leading edge of each wing is decreased at a 45 degrees angle, while the rear of the wing is angled down to leave one 2 mm thick trailing edge. The bottom face of the leading edge is trimmed back slightly. The tips of the wings are shaped down to the same thickness as the trailing edge. The various layers of the plywood serve as an outline that helps the worker achieve equal slopes. A shallow section may also be cut out from the bottom surface of each wing. For example, this might consist of a 5 cm long strip near the wing tip and behind the leading edge. Using progressively finer sandpaper, the surface of the boomerang is smoothed carefully. Check the boomerang for a slight amount of dihedral, 2 to 3 mm, on bot wings at this point. If there isn't any, Introduce some by heating the boomerang either over a heat source or a brief spell in the microwave oven, about 30 seconds on high. If the boomerang is just about uncomfortably hot to handle, you've got it just about right. Bend up the tips of the wings and place the boomerang on a flat surface with a coin under each tip and a weight, bag of sugar? On the elbow of the boomerang. Allow it to cool for 20 minutes or more. After spraying the surface with sanding sealer, the surface is smoothed with fine steel wool. The boomerang is then painted again. The boomerang is then thrown several times to check if it works. The extreme subtleties of the aerodynamic forces on the light wooden boomerang make it surprisingly difficult to predict how the finished boomerang will perform. Two apparently identical boomerangs may radically differ in their flight patterns. For example, they may climb uncontrollably, they may fall repeatedly into the ground, they may exhibit long narrow pattern non-returning flight, or display other erratic behavior. The only sure way to know is to flight test them. There are several methods to correct problems, for example the wing profiles might be adjusted by additional sanding. Plywood boomerangs may be heated for a short time in a microwave oven which softens the glue between the layers and then can be carefully intentionally warped. Angle of attack of the leading arm and the dingle arm can be adjusted, as can the overall dihedral angle of the wings all with some effect. There are many other esoteric tuning techniques as well. Tuning boomerangs is more of a slowly learned art than a science. The quality of the boomerang is also checked throughout this process. A tuned boomerang should be stored carefully on a flat surface away from too much humidity, direct sunlight, or heat. These conditions can subtly affect the shape of the boomerang and ruin its flight characteristics, and the boomerang will then need to be retuned. The hunting boomerang is more delicately balanced and is therefore much harder to make than a returning one. When thrown, this type of boomerang needs to develop no unbalanced aerodynamic forces that would affect its flight path, so that it will fly true to the target. Beginning in the later part of the 20th century, there has been a bloom in the independent creation of unusually designed art boomerangs. These often have little or no resemblance to the traditional historical ones, and on first sight, some of these objects often do not look like boomerangs at all. The use of modern thin plywoods and synthetic plastics have greatly contributed to their success. As long as there are somewhere in the object several airfoil contoured surfaces, whether wing-shaped or not, these boomerangs can be thrown and will return. Designs are amazingly diverse and can range from animal-inspired forms, humorous themes, complex calligraphic and symbolic shapes, to the purely abstract. Painted surfaces are similarly richly diverse. A right-handed boomerang is thrown with a counterclockwise spin causing a counterclockwise flight, as seen from above. Conversely. A left-handed boomerang is constructed as a mirror image with the airfoil's leading edges on the left side of the wings, as seen from above, causing it to produce lift when circling clockwise. Although appearing symmetrical from a flan view, the leading edges are on opposite edges of the wings, letting on trailing, so as to present the leading edges of the airfoil to the wind when spinning. Most sport boomerangs are in the range of about 
The range on most is between. Boomerangs are generally thrown in treeless, large open spaces that are eight twice as large as the range of the boomerang. A right or a left-handed boomerang can be thrown with either hand, but the flight direction will depend upon the boomerang, not the thrower. Throwing a boomerang with the wrong hand requires a throwing motion that many throwers may find awkward. The correct launch orientation makes the boomerang's flight begin by flying into the wind, then having its flight take it through the eye of the wind and finally returning downwind using the wind speed to help complete its flight back to the thrower. It is the spin that makes the boomerang return and the strength off throw and spin must be varied according to the speed of the wind, the stronger the wind, the less power is required to provide lift enough to make the return journey. In other words, the stronger the wind, the softer the boomerang is thrown. A light wind of 3 to 5 miles per hour is considered ideal. If the wind is strong enough to fly a kite, then it is usually too strong for boomerangs. A properly thrown boomerang should curve around to the left, climb gently, level out in mid flight, arc around and descend slowly, and then finish by popping up slightly, hovering, then stalling near the thrower. Ideally, this momentary hovering or stalling will allow the catcher the opportunity to clamp their hands shut horizontally on the boomerang from above and below sandwiching the center between their hands. In international competition, a World Cup is held every second year. Teams from Germany and the United States dominated international competition. The individual world champion title was won in 2000, 2002, 2004, 2012 and 2016 by Swiss thrower Manuel Schutz. In 1992, 1998, 2006 and 2008 Friedolin Frost from Germany won the title. The team competitions of 2012 and 2014 were won by Boomer Gang, an international team. World champions were Germany in 2012 and Japan in 2014 for the first time. Boomer Gang was formed by individuals from several countries, including the Colombian Alejandro Palacio. In 2016, USA became team world champion. Modern boomerang tournaments usually involve some or all of the events listed below in all disciplines the boomerang must travel at least from the thrower. Throwing takes place individually. The thrower stands at the center of concentric rings marked on an open field. Events include, non-discipline record, smallest returning boomerang, Zadir Katan of Australia in 1997 with long and wide. This tiny boomerang flew the required before returning to the accuracy circles on March 22, 1997 at the Australian National Championships. A boomerang was used to set a Guinness World Record with a throw of 1,401.5 feet, 427.2 meters, by David Shumion at Murray Recreation Ground, Australia. This broke the record set by Aaron Hemmings who threw an Aerobie 1,333 feet. 406.3 meters, on July 14, 2003 at Fort Funston, San Francisco. Long-distance boomerang throwers aim to have the boomerang go the furthest possible distance while returning close to the throwing point. In competition the boomerang must intersect an imaginary surface defined as an infinite vertical extrude of a large line centered on the thrower. Outside of competitions, the definition is not so strict, and the thrower is happy whenever he or she does not have to travel after the throw to recover the boomerang. Long-distance boomerangs are optimized to have minimal drag while still having enough lift to fly in return. For this reason, they have a very narrow throwing window, which discourages many beginners from continuing with this discipline. For the same reason, the quality of manufactured long-distance boomerangs is often non-deterministic. Today's long-distance boomerangs have almost all an S or dash question mark shape and have a beveled edge on both sides. The bevel on the bottom side is sometimes called an undercut. This is to minimize drag and lower the lift. Lift must be low because the boomerang is thrown with an almost total layover flat. Long distance boomerangs are most frequently made of composite material, mainly fiberglass epoxy composites. The projection of the flight path of long distance boomerang on the ground resembles a water drop. For older types of long distance boomerangs, all types of so called big hooks, the first and last third of the flight path are very low, while the middle third is a fast climb followed by a fast descent. Nowadays, boomerangs are made in a way that their whole flight path is almost planar with a constant climb during the first half of the trajectory and then a rather constant descent during the second half. From theoretical point of view, distance boomerangs are interesting also for the following reason. For achieving a different behavior during different flight phases, the ratio of the rotation frequency to the forward velocity has a U-shaped function, i.e., its derivative crosses zero. Practically, 
it means that the boomerang being at the furthest point has a very low forward velocity. The kinetic energy of the forward component is then stored in the potential energy. This is not true for other types of boomerangs, where the loss of kinetic energy is non-reversible. The MTAs also store kinetic energy and potential energy during the first half of the flight, but then the potential energy is lost directly by the drag. In Noongar language, Kali is a flat curved piece of wood similar in appearance to a boomerang that is thrown when hunting for birds and animals. Kali is one of the aboriginal words for the hunting stick used in warfare and for hunting animals. Instead of following curved flight paths, Kali's fly in straight lines from the throwers. They are typically much larger than boomerangs, and can travel very long distances, due to their size and hook shapes, they can cripple or kill an animal or human opponent. The word is perhaps an English corruption of a word meaning boomerang taken from one-off Western desert languages, for example, the Warlpiri word Kali. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.